Hey guys, I am so excited that you are here watching our second missions emphasis lesson. Like I said last week, our whole church is participating in missions emphasis weeks. And for us, that means we are taking a break from our regular lessons to talk about BGMC, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge, and how the money kids give to missions helps missionaries all around the world. So before we get started with our lesson, make sure you have your Bible and then stand up and worship with us.
Last week, I introduced a new verse that we call the Great Commission, which is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Let's say it together. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Remember, this wasn't just for the disciples who were with Jesus. This is for all Christians, including us. We have a mission to tell people about Jesus. That includes the people in your neighborhood, your relatives, your friends, and for some people, they go around the world to tell people about Jesus. So this week, we are going to talk about a country and learn what God is doing there through missionaries. Before we get to that, the Connect question for today should give you a hint about what country that is. Are you ready for it? Okay, here it is. If you were on a safari, which animal would you want to see? I've seen animals at the zoo that I think I would see if I were on a safari. And I think my favorite and the one I would be looking forward to seeing the most would be a giraffe. Well, today's country is actually one of the seven continents in the world, and that is Africa. More specifically, we are going to talk about South Africa. I have some facts about the country, some information about what BGMC has helped do there, and a true story for you about what God did through some missionaries. So let's get started. We'll start with, where is it even located? South Africa is at the bottom tip of the African continent, and it's almost twice the size of the state of Texas. South Africa's land is different depending where in the country you are. Grasslands cover parts of the north and the east, mountains run along the east and south coasts, and the Namib Desert is in the west. South Africa has beautiful long beaches, and lush forests, and lots of wildlife and unusual plants. It also has the world's largest gold mine and lots of other mines. When it comes to the weather, South Africa's seasons are opposite from ours. So their summer begins in December and runs through February. Their winter comes along during our summertime. It can get pretty cold there, but rarely snows. There are several languages spoken in South Africa, including Zulu, Afrikaans, and English, but English is the most used in government, business, and education. 86% of the people there are Christians. The rest of the population believes in traditional African religions, Islam, something else, or they don't believe in anything at all. But with the Assemblies of God, there are 18 missionaries who work in South Africa. The International Assemblies of God there has about 400,000 members and about 3,000 churches. There are also about 300 students who are part of the Bible school or other Bible training programs. So it was in 1910 when Pentecostal missionaries first came to South Africa, and God began to fill people with the Holy Spirit. In 1933 is when the Assemblies of God of South Africa was formed. Our missionaries there work with the International Assemblies of God. Kids make up about one-third of the congregations. That's like if they have 300 people, 100 of those are kids, which is pretty cool. They learn about Jesus in Sunday school and other classes at church, like we do. They even have its own version of BGMC to teach kids to pray and give to missions. Every November, they have Children's Day, and churches invite the kids in their area to celebrate and to hear about Jesus. Some of the kids there have pretty tough lives, and they've lost their parents because of diseases or other things going on. Some churches hold after-school programs for needy kids, there's a campground called Jackson's Ridge that is a really special place. Jackson's Ridge holds camps for kids and families, no matter who they are or what their life looks like, 
because they want everyone to have a chance to hear about Jesus and how much he loves them. BGMC has been a big help to the missionaries in South Africa by providing lots of computers, books, training materials, water wells, equipment and supplies for feeding programs, and for kids ministry. BGMC has also been reaching and training kids through the Jackson's Ridge camp that I mentioned. BGMC has provided kitchen equipment, camp supplies, boats, playground equipment, puppets, buildings, and even a lake. BGMC even pays for kids to go to camp. Remember, because they want everyone to have the chance to hear about Jesus. A large portion of BGMC funds is used to pay for educating pastors at the Bible schools. The African churches are growing at such a fast rate that there are more churches than there are pastors. It is so important that pastors be trained for these churches, and they wouldn't be able to afford to leave their families and pay for a biblical education if it weren't for BGMC. So BGMC is helping accomplish a lot in South Africa. Right now, I want to tell you guys a story. It's a true story about what God did through some missionaries in South Africa. So from the top of the hill, the village of Gasagopo, South Africa, looks so peaceful. The sun was reflecting off of the metal roofs, like so many lights shining in the morning light. You could smell the smoke from the wood burning in the cooking fires. But on one particular day, it was anything but peaceful. There were many people with heavy, grieving hearts. A young schoolboy had died. This was the second death of a student in this village within a short period of just six months. Missionaries Wayne and Delight Piercy were asked to conduct a memorial service at the home of this young man. Many family members, members of the village, and fellow classmates would be in attendance. The dirt road was rough and full of potholes, but soon they arrived at the deceased boy's home. He had been living with his grandmother, or Gogo, -Go, and after conducting the memorial service, Wayne and Delight were asked to come and speak to the grandmother. Wayne and Delight found her inside a cooking hut, a round mud hut with a thatched roof. As they entered the hut, they found the grandmother sitting on a woven grass mat on the dirt floor. Her back was against the wall, and her legs were straight. Ooh. Her back was against the wall, and her legs were stretched straight out in front of her. Gogo -Go directed her eyes downward, but Delight could see that her face was lined with grief, and tears were still fresh on her cheeks. Using an interpreter, the missionaries began to speak to her. Tears filled Gogo's eyes. She said in a language called Sepeti, I don't know what I'm going to do. My feet are crippled. I haven't walked in three years. My grandson was my feet, and now he is gone. The rest of my family lives too far away to help me. What am I going to do? The missionary said, We do not have the answers, but God does. May we pray with you? She agreed. So they laid their hands on her and began to pray. They asked God to help her through this difficult time and to heal her feet. After they finished praying, they felt impressed to try to lift Gogo -Go to her feet. With help, she took one step and then another. Soon, Gogo -Go pulled away from the missionaries and began jumping and dancing and praising God. A daughter of the grandmother, who had traveled a long distance to be with her, was holding a metal bull in her hands. When she saw the grandmother dancing, she threw the bull in the air and began shouting and praising God. Everyone joined in on this joyous dance. That small, dark cooking hut became alive with movement and life. God had turned Gogo's mourning into dancing. There is still so much work to be done. Not long after this boy's funeral, Wayne and Delight were called to do another funeral of another young boy from that school. Death and violence had become a way of life. It is the missionary's hope that through the love of Jesus and the testimony of people like Gogo, -Go, the village children will turn to Jesus instead of violence. With the help of BGMC, 
lives can be changed. The money given to BGMC goes to help our missionaries buy the supplies they need to share the gospel message. Because of BGMC, many kids and other people in South Africa are giving their lives to Jesus. So in that story, we heard about how the faith of the missionaries was a part of how God healed the grandmother. God is all-powerful, and he can do more than we could ever imagine. So I want you to think about a box. You can fit a lot of things into a box, but in order to close it, there are certain things that just won't fit. Sometimes we might think about God like we are trying to fit him in a box to understand everything about him. But God doesn't have any limits. He is all-powerful. He is everywhere all at once, and we can trust him with anything. Don't ever think that anything is too hard or impossible for God. We have to give our faith chances to grow. And that happens when we start trusting God with everything in our lives. Remember those missionaries I talked about? Their faith led to the grandmother being healed. But even more importantly than that, the rest of the people there witnessed God's power and it made a difference in their lives. In the Bible, we read about how when just one sinner repents and believes in God, the angels in heaven rejoice. That's a choice that lasts forever because we then know that person will spend forever in heaven with Jesus. So BGMC is making a forever difference in people all over the world, and it's super exciting that we get to be a part of that. I hope you enjoy learning just a little bit about South Africa with me and how missions is making a difference there. Your parents have a link with some discussion questions and activities, so make sure you check those out and then come back next week to learn about another country with me. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye!